We are back with another entry into our AMD AM5 budget board battle. And today we'll be taking a look at MSI's X670P Pro Wi-Fi. Now, we chose to look at this board today for a few reasons. One, at $229, it is one of the lowest cost entries into our series so far. Also, we noticed that we've leaned heavily into ASUS and Gigabyte, and while most of their recent issues have been resolved through BIOS updates, it's understandable that a lot of consumers are still kind of hesitant to buy from those brands, especially with the added customer service issues from ASUS around their RMA process. Finally, I've noticed that this board seems to be paired a lot in these micro center bundle deals, giving even more savings to consumers and helping you guys build a budget system. But that probably leaves you wondering, is this board a good choice for me? While we go over the features of this board today, we'll be getting it ready to go into our Praxis test bench from Primo Chill, and we'll have a later video going into detail about the performance and stability of this particular board paired with some different options that we have here ready for testing. We also already have this same board up and running in a budget build being tested by one of our producers with a 7900X, a 2070 Super, and DDR5 6000 from G-Skill. So make sure if you haven't already, take a second to go down there, like and subscribe, so you can come back and see the full details of this board. And while we're on the topic of subscribing, we are quickly approaching a thousand subscribers and we plan to do a huge subscriber only giveaway and a live event as soon as we hit that mark. So again, make sure you go down, click that button, subscribe to the channel. That way you can stay up to date on all of the latest products that we're testing, as well as have a chance to be entered into that drawing. Now, typically this is the part where we talk about MSI's marketing, where we get everything unboxed. But today, I just wanna dive straight into talking about the specs and features of this specific motherboard. Just looking at the board, you can already see a huge departure from the typical RGB-centric, dragon-themed, gamer-oriented approach that MSI takes on a lot of their higher-end boards. And this makes sense as MSI describes the Pro Series as business elegance, stepping away from the gamer enthusiast crowd and targeting a more business-centric customer. But that doesn't necessarily mean that this is a bad choice for enthusiasts, especially as we've seen a lot of people start to trend away from that RGB-centric, looks like it should be behind a DJ booth at a rave style designing. This board packs a solid 14 two-in-one power design rated at 80 amps. And while not as over the top as some of the other boards, it should be more than sufficient to adequately power any of the AMD 7000 series chips. In fact, as you'll see soon, we're about to throw a 7950X in here for this build. It also supports DDR5 up to 6,000 mega transfers a second. Now, that's another area where on paper it falls short of pretty much all X670E and most B650E boards that are rated at 62 to 6,400. But again, that's another area where specs on paper can be misleading with AMD themselves coming out right and stating that 6,000 is gonna be the sweet spot for all AM5 series chips. Not to mention that stability issues, especially on this new AM5 platform, seem to ramp up exponentially as you try and increase RAM speeds past 6,000. Looking at the expansion slots, we have one, two, three, PCIe X16 slots, all rated at Gen 4, as well as one PCIe X1 slot, not something that you see on a lot of these AM5 boards. Uh, the top two primary P2 
PCIe expansion slots are also still reinforced to handle some of the behemoth GPUs out there. One thing that is missing is a quick release or Q latch, something like Asus has, and even MSI has on some of their higher end boards. And I have to admit, that's a feature that I've become pretty used to, especially with all the testing we do and switching out of GPUs and components. Um, it's really convenient to have, but only you can decide if that's something that's gonna actually matter to you. For storage, the board packs four M.2 slots with the primary slot being rated at Gen 5 while the other three are rated at Gen 4. Now, another thing of note is there is only a built-in heatsink over the main Gen 5 M.2 slot. And that might be something if you're using multiple M.2 storages that could be an issue for you. However, a lot of Gen 4 storage comes with available heat sinks. So again, something you're gonna have to decide if it actually affects you and your bill. One thing of note with the M.2 storage is none of these four slots share lanes with the PCIe expansion slots, which is not something we usually see on these budget boards and is a nice touch to have. That's not gonna matter for most people, but for the few of you that it does, it really does. Moving into the rear IO, the first thing you'll notice is MSI doesn't pre-install the IO shield. It's worth noting that this is the first AM5 board we've tested that's come like this. It's not a huge deal, but it's one of those convenience factors that I'm not really sure why MSI went in this direction with this particular board. Unfortunately, the story on the IO doesn't get much better from there with only six USB type A slots. Now, thankfully, they are all rated at Gen 3 or better. However, this still falls well short of the 10 or more USB type A slots we've seen on most of these boards so far. There are two type C ports and I'm still wondering when we're gonna ever see more than two type C ports on a rear IO, but that's a topic for a later discussion. It also has a full complement of audio jacks as well as BIOS flashback. Now that we've covered all the main features and specs of this board, let's start getting things in there and getting it ready to go into our test bench for further testing. Okay, so let's start getting this thing put together now. Um, a few parts we have going in today, while we're still waiting on the rest of our test build to come together, we have a AMD Ryzen 7950X CPU. Um, as I was saying earlier, I really wanna push this board to see what we can get out of it. We're gonna be pairing that with Triton G-Skill DDR5 CL36 RAM. Now in our other build we already have put together, we're also using Triton Z DDR5 RAM, except we're using the CL30. The big difference is that is a SK Phoenix kit while this one is Samsung die. Uh, and finally, we'll just be throwing in our uh, Crucial P3 Plus this is a drive that already has Windows preloaded that we use in a lot of our testing. When you go with these budget builds, a lot of times one of the things you sacrifice on is VRM and power delivery. And while this one is much lower than a lot of the X670 e boards, or really all of the X670 e boards, and most of the B650e, it shouldn't have an issue handling something um, as demanding as a 7950X, but I guess we're gonna see. Of luck with this kit we've actually used this in a couple of tests so far um, it's been really good this was the original kit i had in our editing rig build the demon pc that you've seen in a few other videos while we were in the process of switching out the motherboard that burn up from asus we went ahead and switched out new ram and saved this kit to use in our test builds so i know for a fact that this is a solid kit we're not going to have any issues with it um, and should give us a pretty good comparison for this versus some of the other kits out there.
stay out of the camera's way so you guys can see what we're doing. Ready to get this thing dropped into our test bench. I genuinely love the design of this Praxis wet bench from Primo Chill. Uh, you basically install your motherboard standoffs for whatever size board you're working with. These screws come through, it makes it incredibly easy to line up, and there are there are different size fittings for any board you're trying to build. All right, take two. I still really love the design of this Praxis wet bench from Primo Chill. Um, it, it does make installing any, any type of motherboard easy. So you just slide it over the standoffs that you pre-installed and there's some nuts that you use to screw it down. I'm not gonna make you guys sit here and watch me do all of that. I'm just gotta talk about wrap up and final thoughts on this. If you're not gonna come back and check out the final benchmarking video, like what are our thoughts on this, this motherboard? So I think this is a solid budget option. Now I wouldn't put it up there with any of the X670E boards or really any of the higher B650E boards. However, at the price point for 229, it's a solid buy and a solid motherboard that's gonna give you probably all of the features you need and 99% of the features that you want, especially a gaming build. I mean, you have PCIe Gen 4, which is all you need considering even the 4090 is still only a Gen 4 card. Um, you have a Gen 5 M.2 slot as well as three other Gen 4 M.2s. Only takes DDR5 up to 6,000 mega transfers. However, 6,000 is the sweet spot for AMD right now. And anything over that, we've had a lot of stability issues trying to get RAM clocked over that. My only concern would be the VRM being slightly less robust than some of the other options. While we do testing, I'm gonna actually pull thermals from the VRM to see what temps it gets up to. Now, and my, my gut tells me that this is still gonna be solid. Um, you're not gonna have any issues with temperature or anything like that with your VRM. I mean, really that's it. This board pretty much has everything you would need and it comes in at a price that is more than affordable. Hey guys, if you enjoyed that video, don't forget to check out one of these. Make sure you like, subscribe, check out some of our other content. And as always, thanks for watching.